Hang in there. All right, good. So this is a meeting of this. Morning, Judy. So this is a meeting of the CSS Workforce New York Executive Committee on December 3rd, 2020. Present from the board, we have, uh, let's see, I'm gonna cross my screen here. We have Tim Driscoll, Ernie Hartman, Jack Wheeler, Judy McKinney-Cherry, Michael Mishook, James Griffin, and Joe Roman. Uh, from staff present, we have uh, Phyllis Ballier, Melissa Johnson, and myself, Dan Porter. So I think we have quorum, Jack. It is all yours. Okay, thank you. And sorry, a uh, bus still hasn't arrived. It's running late, so trying to corral the kids right now. So, uh, so I might just have to step away when the bus comes. Uh, meetings called to order. Uh, obviously, conflict of interest disclosure. Um, anything comes up uh, that conflicts with uh, yourself. Uh, personally or your organization, please note that. Meeting minutes from uh, uh, November. Move to accept. I'll okay. second. We have a motion. We have a second. Any questions? <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thank you. All right, Dan, your show. You want to go over the budget? Sure. So October 2020 budget, let me zoom in on this a little bit more. So these are our expenditures through the end of October. So November just closed on Monday, um, and we didn't have time to turn around the November budget for this. So we'll get that. Um, uh, I'll probably present that unless you guys want to look at it yourselves first. Um, I'll probably present that. Uh, we should be able to have it by next week uh, for the full board, and then we'll be back on um, back on track. That's good. <clears throat> So through the end of October, um, we're about 33%. That's up here in the corner. Um, we're about 33% of the way through the year. Um, if you look at the total personnel subcategory, again, the, the proof budgets here, the gray column on the left, um, our miniature expenditure goals from initials was, was on the right. Um, it, this column right here kind of tracks us with our accrued, our, our expended, our accrued, and our obligated, meaning the Department of Labor definitions. So that's kind of the column that I'll work off of. So 33% of the way through the year, you say that uh, you can see that on our salary line, we're about 30% expended, uh, which is right on track. You can see the fringe line, again, also looks like it's way behind at 15%. That really is a timing issue. Um, after the first three years, when we'll get all of our health cares and health savings accounts, and we, we'll have a whole flood of them. So over the next uh, uh, month or two here, um, you'll see that 15% grow. It may even get a little ahead because of the timing nature of it and then come back down. But all in all, um, this 30% number is a good number for us uh, this far through the year. And I'm, I'm pleased that all, all in all, it's 20%. <laughs> I'm really support there. Um, we will be, Patty and I will be closing uh, in this category here, about 40%, 42% through the year. Rent utilities, a goodly chunk of this is going to be met, moved down to youth. We are going to, I'm, Patty's going to set us a time and I'm going to bring a tape measure in and we're going to mask up and whatnot and we're going to do some measurements on that. So you'll see that come down. Um, I'm very comfortable that we've got plenty of money in this budget line item. It just shows reflection of the year because we got to move some out to youth. Specifically, it'll go down here in this 700 line right here. We just see no money then right now. Um, editorial board related expenses, <clears throat> professional services, you're going to see a big bump up, uh, or not a, on a professional services line right here. Um, you're going to see our single audit is progressing. Uh, well, we should have it done and we'll have a draft on that to the single audit committee, Nancy and Drew here in the coming weeks. Um, we'll have that all cleaned up and you'll see a big jump in expenditures on that line. We will, however, probably have a little bit of money left there that um, I may, um, when we do our mid-year adjustment, I may kind of rob a, a thousand or two out of there and kind of slide it down into the tree. Um, staff development, staff travel. This is an area here, the 540 line um, right here. The staff travel, you can see we are way, we put aside 17,000. Um, I got to be honest with you, doing all these meetings like, as such as, as we are, um, I don't see us spending anywhere near that much money. So there's going to be a goodly chunk of money that we're going to move out of there as well. And again, the, the plan is to move it down into our training line. Um, dues and memberships were high right now. It's a, t it's a timing issue. Um, we are just waiting, I believe, on the Watkins Chamber and the Hornell Chambers um, 
once we get those, um, we'll we'll be caught up for the year on that. <laughs> Outreach here on this line here, um, there is a group working on, we've got an internal task force of cross programs that we're kind of working on some outreach strategies and, and tactics and messaging and stuff like that. As you can see, we've got about 10,000 left in that line. I'm not really going to look to move that out because I think given the, the low volume and I actually, Judy, it came up in operations and oversight committee yesterday as well. Um, given the, the need to kind of reach out and get the community, trying to get that workforce re-engaged and let them know that we're open and alive and they really, um, really kind of need to, 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 to we, we need them to come see us. So um, I want to reserve some money there. I don't know what that's going to look like yet. We're still putting kind of touches on it, but expect some outreach there. Um, supplies, you're going to see um, a, a little different approach on this. I've shared all along that we've got a whole bunch of supplies that are kind of stockpiled for the career centers, the PPE. So it's disinfecting wipes and sprays and gloves and all that fun stuff. Um, so it's stockpiled here. And so you see a very what looks like a very high expenditure rate. Um, what we do is when we send a box of wipes to, uh, to Elmira, then we take it out of this line here and then we move it down to the associated career center that we send it to. So over time, you see on accounting basis, some of these numbers slowly migrate down here. What we're going to do so that you guys have a better vision of what that actually looks like is we, Patty has created another line um, that will say um, PPE supply. I forget what we called it, but PPE supplies or cleaning supplies or something along those lines. And we're going to kind of differentiate this. So you'll be able to see the supplies that we're using in the admin office and then the stockpile of supplies that will slowly migrate down. So it'll give you a little bit of better picture of what that looks like. Um, Equipment and maintenance. Um, with everybody going full remote, we had to. Uh, we're we're blowing this line out of out of the, out of the water right now, um, because uh, we have a whole bunch of different cell phones. We had to buy cell phones for staff that to work remotely, and and so that's up. Um, we're going to work on some of that and see. Some of that may go down here into one-stop operations, but otherwise we may need to bump that overall budget line up to accommodate that. Uh, insurances, 0% expended, um, they're all come due after the first of the year. So you'll see a, a very large number appear suddenly there. Um, meeting expenses, GMS, special projects, payroll service. There's nothing really too exciting to uh, to report on any of those. Overall operating expenditures at 42% total obligated and whatnot. Given that the, we're a little bit high rate up in here right now, I'm pretty pleased with a 42% number. So I feel comfortable in that category. One-stop expenses, um, we just, I've asked Patty to update in um, our obligations. She is not obligated and, and properly put in um, all of the full leases into this obligation. So when you get the next budget, you'll see these numbers go up. You'll see, it looks like we have a huge obligation. Or it's just realizing the, the lease for the pro action space, the lease for the Montour Falls space, um, the lease for the Hornell space. Um, I mean, we've got we got we got leases there. And we're just they're not properly put in there. So you'll see that go up. Down to the meat and potatoes, which is this program expenditures category here. Um, youth operator training spring NIATEP is coming up. Um, so we will see some expenditures coming on that line fairly soon. Work experiences. The the merging workforce program is is really they are doing a pretty good job on uh, getting some work young people into the into the work experiences and, and and into the labor force, so they're progressing. We track them. Um, Phyllis and Keith actually track against benchmarks weekly, um, so they are on pace at this point. Um, contracted services. We're still waiting to execute the final agreement for the third year with. Uh, We've got budgets and we're just waiting for signatures and, and stuff like that. Once you do, you'll see a very big uptick in the obligations. Again, recognizing the value of that contract as, as a legal obligation. Um, OJTs and customized. Um, we had put up 200,000 in there. If you look at the obligations, if everything goes through across everywhere, it looks like we've already spent about 167 of that, which exceeds kind of our initial planning goal. Um, so. <clears throat> We, uh, I'm gonna, we're gonna scrounge at some of those upper categories to try and bring some money down in and keep that OJT and customized activities um, rolling. 
we will also have some of them. History tells us that a certain number of contracts, you know, people that are in OJTs, they don't stick. So we kind of move those dollars out. So I'm not, I'm not panicking, but I do need to dig for some more money there. The top money, um, when we do the thing, is going to go down into the ITA, um, so the earnings group. So earn, originally on the ITA line, we'd put about 85,000. At this point, we've obligated about 120, which seems like we've blown the budget. But again, remember in the ITA line, until all the FAFSAs and everything and all the financial aid stuff comes in, um, these really represent obligations, not expenditures. So if somebody gets a full Pell award to cover their tuition, then even though I set aside seven grand for them, I, I don't need to spend any of it. So don't be nervous on that front, um, but we will try and put some more money in there as well. Uh, supportive services really have taken off well. I, I gotta be honest, I have not seen an 11, $12,000 uh, supportive service expenditure since the, well, the great recession, quite honestly, um, back in uh, you know nine, 10 in that area of the world. Um, so I, I'm not going to take uh, my strong recommendation is to not steal any of this 25 plays out. We may, however, um, some of this 10,000 that we put in, in mileage, um, we may not do because so many of the courses um, at the training providers are virtual or a percentage of them are virtual. We're not, uh, while you see a huge number in supportive services, we still have to buy the steel toed boots, the scrubs, blah, 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 blah. Um, because they're doing so much online, we're not eating into the mileage. So we'll do some analysis on that, and we may steal a few thousand there um, on that line. So all in all, 33% of the way through the year. If you look at the obligations, 43%, but when you kind of factor in um, different pieces, I'm, I'm not, I, I'm actually pretty pleased with where we're at right now, particularly down here in, in, in the lines of the meat and potatoes where we're really spending hard money on, on uh, on votes. The only last thing I would add is we have we have heard the first trickle, potential trickle of monies um, under um, coming into the area from uh, some of the, the, the federal stuff. So New York State re applied for a, a grant, Department of Labor all on its own, an emergency grant some time ago. Um, they were awarded, I think it was $12 million. Um, Four million of that they had earmarked in their original plan as training. They weren't sure if they were going to run a try and run a state administered training program out of Albany or what they were going to do with it. They just announced this past week. So last week they shared with the workforce board directors that um, they had decided that they're going to use push that four million out to the local areas to spend. So instead of having to submit a, something to Albany and, and going through the. See, you know, the whatever systems they they try and set up they're going to just shoot it out to local areas on a prorated basis so if that's the case four million dollars new york city historically gets approximately half of all training money so probably two of that will go to new york city long island will take some westchester county will take some albany buffalo um so i don't have an exact number but i would guess that we will probably see in the neighborhood of maybe maybe Best case scenario, $100,000 of dislocated training money. Um, again, I don't, I don't know the exact numbers, and I don't, I won't know until, until literally they send us the notice. But my guess is we'll have about a, about 100,000, between 80 and 100,000 dollars of, of dislocated, which will probably go into because it's dislocated, will almost exclusively go into that um, tuition and IPA. So that will really keep up Ernie's um, group's necessity to, to, to. To get some and I got a question. Yep. This is Jim Griffin. Did they mention anything about paying the past OJT monies that they owe? They owe us seventy-eight thousand dollars for over a year. <laughs> We've been obligated. I mean, we we owe it to local employers for training, and the state right. hasn't paid the chamber programs. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> I mean, we have. <clears throat> we have some admin money coming out, but most most of the seventy eight thousand dollars is monies that are owed to our businesses here. So they did not. Um, the 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 chamber OJT funds come out of general fund money versus WIOA fund money, um, and they use a limited bit of the WIOA infrastructure, the OSOS and stuff that that Sue has to do. But it's not. They don't have to follow all the WIOA rules and whatnot because it's general fund money. Um, so they did not mention it. That being said. Um, 
I don't know if you guys do an adult or DW identification or not. Um, if you if you do do a DW or adult um, eligibility determination prior to, this would be the time to kind of weigh in, or we can I, I can ask up through and and see if there's any thoughts on that. Because um, if if those folks were labeled as dislocated before, um, even if we can get a few of those dollars on this NEG. Um, well, they, you know, they claim they lost our final submissions. We've final, we've done final submissions three times. <laughs> Every time they've lost them. Yeah. Uh, they did call a week ago or two weeks ago. They got a new guy uh, asked if we would resubmit for the fourth time, uh, which we have done. But it's uh, I don't who is who are you contacting? Is it is it a DOL person? Yeah. Okay. If you, I mean, I'm not. I won't stick my nose in there, but it, unless you see some benefit in it, but if you if you share that with me, I can maybe identify and try and get some encouraging. So encourage, encourage some follow up um, in Albany. I'll talk to Sue today again about it. OK, let me know. I, I don't want to stick my nose in if, if where it doesn't belong. But if, if you see value, I, I certainly can share it with them and see what happens. OK, the higher ups. all right. Thanks, Dan. Dan question. Uh, would it be our budget year that we have uh, deadlines to spend it or is it more flexible or? <laughs> So NEG grants are just that, they are NEG grants. So it will be based on whatever timeline when the Department of Labor submitted their request and how long okay. they asked to have it to spend. Okay. So it's not a normal, it's not a formula flow fund. Um, it's, a, it's, it's, an, it's a grant funding. So this will be, when we spend on NEG types of things, we don't always get, for us, it creates kind of a, a situation similar to Jim in that normally with formula funds, we can kind of request it and in five days we get it. When you get into NEGs and you've got grant structures in place, they don't always flow as quickly. Um, and the, and the, debt, the timelines are wherever they submitted. So they will be treated a little bit internally. We'll treat them effectively the same and kind of use our formula funds to smooth it out. Um, but the reality is, is that they flow differently. OK, OK. All right. Uh... Any other questions for Dan on the budget? Very thorough, much appreciated on my end. If not, could I have a motion to accept, please? So moved. Judy. Second. Sounds like Mike. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. All right, Dan, the ETPL updates. All right, so ETPL. So a couple of things. Yes, I we got, a, we got three um, ETPL additions. We have um, the, I know that we stopped doing and we have notified everyone and we're not initiating new um, cosmetology or barber trainings in the area. However, some of our folks we had previously approved and the training provider moved their dates. Therefore, we need to accept the, the new dates. So what you see here is, is um, the same thing that we've approved in the past. The difference is the, I'm trying to find the start date on here. All oh, right here. Yep, right here. So in this, you see in this section right here, they did they moved the initial they moved the this training start date to December second. Um, so we do need to accept that date change. It's it's really perfunctory, I think, and administrative in nature, but we do need to do that. Otherwise, the folks that we've previously approved um, will not be able to be paid for. I the other is um, Sage Trucking. Sage Trucking is updating their information as well. Um, going down to where's the did they just change did they change tuition on this Phyllis or was yes it? they did and um, they had to update their listing in their local level. The other thing on your agenda it says 150 um, hours. It's actually 160, 160 hours. So just want to make that note. Okay. So their their tuition went up to 53.95 with some additional and then the hours here. So yeah. within the system, actually within the system, it says 150, Phyllis. Instructional hours. Yeah, the thing that I submitted said. Anyways, this is what we have oh. in the system. Um, bump up in tuition, still within our cap category, but regardless, to be honest with you, we only pay what we pay based on, on our, our, our schedule. So um, we've used Sage in the past. They're reputable. Um, 
well, I guess there's always some discrepancy if they're reputable or not, but um, yeah, so there's nothing scary there. The other was the uh, Canandaigua Driving School. We've used them in the past. What shifted? Oh, Canandaigua was the 160. Okay, all right. Yeah, so Canandaigua bumped it to 160 in terms of their right. hours. Correct. <laughs> yeah, and then you can see their tuition is, Canandaigua is higher than Sage. Um, by about 1300 bucks, 1400 bucks. Still within our cap, um, but again, we are protected in so much as we only pay what we pay. So we have, I, we put two out there, but the realist, but we had Canada would try and sneak in a last minute change. So um, it would be That's, great if we could have uh, an approval to, to, to update theirs. Yeah, and I'd even say, I mean, even with Canada was increase, I mean, that's not an astronomical amount in my view. Based on, I mean, we're doing some of that at the county, so um, looks good to me. Any questions from anyone? Yeah, I'm just. Were, was there any uh, negative uh, feedback from the barbering school about us kind of <coughs> shutting it down a little bit? Well, I'll tell you my my thoughts and what I saw, and then Phyllis, I don't know if you've got anything else, but so when we sent it out. At first, they they actually sent some more people up, kind of like you know we didn't really hear that message. We didn't get the memo that we're not getting we owe money, so they sent some folks over. So we reminded them uh, a second time that uh, that we were taking a little hiatus from that, and I've heard nothing since then. I don't know, Phyllis. Anything else from your end? Oh no, it's been quiet. I don't know if that's good or. It's been quiet. Yep. Everybody looks like they got their hair done. <laughs> Just glad I got here. Yeah, we don't live in Shimong County. We can do that here. <laughs> for, for now, I should say for now. Um, but uh, okay, anything else for Dan on this? If not, motion to approve. I move to approve. Second. Okay, motion second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. All right. So thank you. That, that, that's all three of those. So let me just close those out. All right. Sick leave policy. Let me see if I can. Uh, so this one here, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to fully do it today or not, but um, oh, I got to change my screens. Hold on. Wait, which way did it go? Draft leave lounge. All right, so this is so with the New York State's paid leave, we do need to adjust our sick leave policies um, to be fully compliant. So what you see here are the are two policies which really come to play. We've got the vacation time leave policy and we have the sick leave policy. So I've made no draft changes to the to the to the vacation policy um, at this point, but th that's only just because we, we kind of need to chat a little bit about. So I'd like to focus on paid sick leave. So under New York State's paid sick leave, bottom line, um, we are going to fully comply with New York's paid sick leave leg legislation and subsequent regulatory opinions. Uh, employees will accrue up to 40 hours of paid sick leave per calendar year. Um, so that is down. So historically, as an agency, we have offered 64 hours per year. So the employees stand to lose about 24 hours, three days of sick leave annually um, under New York State's change. Um, hey, Dan. Yep. Um, is that a is is the 40 hours a maximum that the state put in or a minimum that the state put in? The 40 hours is a minimum the state put in. You can put okay. every, however much you want. Okay. So um, in theory, we could just simply carry over and say 64. However, I've been to at least two, if not three, webinars with legal folks on there, um, and they strongly discourage companies from going above their minimum requirement because the way New York State has done this sick leave change, they've basically created a, a protected class of leave. So realistically, these hours and the way they've defined them, the employees can use them for a very, very broad, number of things um, it is very very loose and so effectively an employee can just call up and 
Wait, I'm not, I'm not. How do I want to say this? I don't necessarily disagree with the, the intent of the legislation, but the unforeseen thing of this and, and is is that you've got you've got a protected group. So the employees can use it for a whole broad list of things. And you really you can't say no as an employer. Um, they just get to do it and it's it's out there. So all of the both of the legal webinars I've been on so su suggested that if you if you're an employer who had a combined paid time off a pto so some don't break it down into vacation and sick time they just say you get you know 120 hours a year use it as you will um what the the, the legal folks out there are saying is, is that you shouldn't you should truly consider breaking that down and creating a sick leave bank um and a vacation or paid time off leave bank and separating it out and and it really kind of isolating these required hours. Um, and so that's kind of, I, I took there and I'm not being very eloquent with the reasoning and I apologize for that. Um, but they are very much saying that, that suggesting that you should, you should look at that as an employer. Um, so that's kind of why I went to 40 hours. So it's very broad definition. All the language that you see and that you're kind of, I'm, I know I'm scrolling here. So let me start again. Uh -huh. So absence of work when employee or employee's family member has been a victim of domestic violence, um, safety planning, attorneys, social services, complaints, incidents. You probably have these changes already in your own businesses. So I'm, I'm guessing you do anyways, because they come online here in blue weeks. Um, permissible reasons was defined um, by New York State under this legislation doesn't include bereavement. We do offer a small bereavement um, three days for certain and one day for others. Family members are, are now redefined by New York State and it is a much broader definition than what we've used in the past. Um, and I don't necessarily even have a problem with this part. I, I, I truly don't. Um, it says here they must provide an oral or written request to the supervisor prior to using the accrued leave. Um, as, and as far as advanced as possible to allow sufficient notice and blah, 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 blah. The reality is, is while they need to provide oral or written notice, it can be, it can be last minute. And as long as they tell you it's in one of those categories, it's a done deal, whatever. You can provide some level of protection to yourself here um, in terms of the increments. So um, we in the past have done it as low as an hour. Um, my thought and thinking through is that we need to maybe look at a little bit bigger chunk um, just because otherwise you could literally have people kind of on board for the rest of the day or um, I, I hate to sound like I got I, I just I don't think any of our staff necessarily would do it um, but I, I think we, we my thought is we need to bump that up a little bit they get normal rate of pay um, <clears throat> Bottom line, if they do use it for when we find out it's not for something that's legally allowable, then we do have the ability to take disciplinary action. Um, 40 hours in a calendar year, the paid sick leave can be carried from year one year to the next. However, only 40 years of only 40 hours of paid sick leave may be used per calendar year. So you bottom line, this will be another big change for us. On our system right now, you can um so if we get 64 hours, if I have a particularly healthy year, all of my sick time rolls into next year and then another 64. So I could theoretically have 100 and what's the math, 28. Um, under this one, you can only use 40 hours of this protected sick leave a year. That's all you can use. So yeah, you can carry it forward, um, but you can only use 40. Um, those with uh, collective bargaining agreements can set up some differences on this, um, at least initially but i think long term you're going to see even um some of the collective bargaining folks um reconfiguring what's in their language around this um we're not really supposed to this the reason i have this highlight is this is an area where i'm kind of tickling on the edge of probably what's allowable um so if an employee is on paid sick leave for more than for more than three that's very horrible writing for for three or more consecutive days whole or partial they need to produce a written attestation 
that the use of the paid sick leave conforms with the legal uses and the employee provides written assurances that she, he, she or he is able to perform the duties of the position or a physician's documentation of accommodations that may be required for consideration. Um, that is an area that is, it's a little bit up in the air um, to whether you can even ask employees to document because mm -hmm. they are not required to necessarily tell you, remember all these things up, whoops, where did it go? They're not, ne they're not required to tell me which of this that they're using it for. They just say, I need, an hour of sick leave at two o'clock today. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's really what it comes down to. I'm not allowed to really get into the whys or anything like that. You just get it. <coughs> it's a protected type of leave. Um, so I'm not even sure that legally I can ask, because before we, we could ask, we could say a doctor's release or something along those lines. So what I've kind of done is modified this to just the employee needs to give me a written assurance that they're able to perform the duties of the position. Or if, if they did see a doctor, and the doctor says, you know, you can't stand for more than two hours at a time or you can't work for more than. Two. Um, we have some sort of consideration from a doctor and about the reasonable accommodation and whether we're going to be able to accommodate that. So this is an area where I'm a little bit tricky on and I will tell you that. I'm not entirely sure if, if push came to shove that we could do that piece. I don't think you can, Dan, from everything that I've gone through with this paid sick leave. You can't ask. I mean, if you can say somebody takes the sick leave um, and you find out that uh, they just want to, you know, they, they took off a day early on their their holiday or whatever. Uh, yeah, that that's abusing the the, the meaning of, of the, the sick leave, but you can't ask them. Um, why you know why they're taking it any any uh medical questions i don't even know if you can ask for a doctor slip to come back to work to, to be honest with you it, it everybody is so protected and and uh through hipaa and all that i don't know if you can do it yeah. is, is is that because you don't have collective bargaining agreements because all the things that we've seen is our CBAs which require the same kind of thing a doctor's note uh, if more than three days we have the same threshold um, we haven't heard any issues with that you have a collective bargaining agreement that's in place prior to the onset of this legislation um, so you can you're kind of grandfathered in I think okay. until you renegotiate and I think okay. when you renegotiate and Ernie knows obviously well, I'm, I'm assuming, Ernie, you know a lot more on this, but I think when you renegotiate, then you're going to have to make some changes. Yeah. And uh, the other question I've got, Dan, is, is what's happening to the uh, the promised hours of, of time off that um, are over and above the 40 that you've uh, taken out? Is so right just, now, the employees realize a net loss of 24 hours of leave time a year. Um, because I, I, I'm in, if someone wants to suggest, uh, you know, a higher level, you know, if we, we stay with 64 and we keep it in this protected class of leave, um, I think we can certainly discuss that. I just, I, I, can, can we, can we dump that into annual leave? I know that has probably broader financial consequences, but I personally don't think that we should give them a net loss and leave. Well, we can, and that's kind of why I, I remember I told you that I just put that as a placeholder. I didn't know, you know, do, do we as a company, we can certainly go into exec or something, or you can go into exec. I can create a little, I think I know how to create a breakout room, or we can even postpone this till the full board meeting. Um, I didn't know if, if as a board you wanted to kind of realize that, or if you wanted to move those 24 hour and I reconfigure the vacation. Uh -huh our paid vacation time and we just move those 24 hours up there to kind of so, keep them neutral. So go go up to on the vacation, do they get it upon separation, do they get pay out of all vacation or how does that work? Yes. Yep. So our okay. sick leave, our sick leave, because you can carry it forever, you don't get paid out at the end. On vacation you have to use it, but you will get paid it out at the end if you need okay. to. OK, so what we do and not to not to complicate it anymore, but we have three buckets. We have 
annual leave, which is your vacation leave. We have sick leave, obviously, and then we have personal leave. And personal leave is really just kind of, it's essentially annual leave, um, but you never get paid it. If uh, if you don't use it, it gets rolled into your sick leave uh, yeah. at the at the end. Um, could we do something like that? Um, absolutely. We, well, we can do any number of things. So could we do something like that? Yeah. I, 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 the only thing I would say is I, I wouldn't want to see it rolled back into sick leave down that because that's okay. kind of the, the troublesome part here for, for us. But if you wanted to create a personal leave bank of three hours, you know, three days, 24 hours a year that expires every year or something like that we start or give them two years suspended just like we do vacation however i mean i can i can create a third category to a bucket to put those 24 hours in it i guess that'd be my opinion because I, I i just really strongly don't think that we should you know because of changing the law you know net a loss to them and leave i agree yeah is, is this a discussion that should be held in an executive session we can certainly go that route if you want. Yeah. You're kind of hemming and on a little bit, and I understand why I would think that this is a, an executive session discussion that would be brought to the board. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. You know, I think that it's, um, um, we operate similar to what Jack just said, where we have, we have three buckets. We just went through and we made all our changes about two and a half years ago because uh, it was pretty outdated. The only thing that we did is we don't allow carryover. We, you have to use your vacation. So because we don't want to have a situation where we're paying out, um, you know, a lot of money that we just don't have in our budget. So we actually have a, a limit on the um, amount of carryover for vacation. But other than that, we have the three buckets. I don't know that this, Jim, I don't, I'm not sure. Uh, this is just policy. We're not going to be talking about Unless we're planning on talking about individuals, and I, I, I just think it's just a policy question and it's a policy conversation. So I, we can do it in executive session, but I just don't. I guess I don't. I don't see unless Dan. That's okay as long, as long as you're comfortable with it. I'm know. comfortable. Okay. Yeah, I am too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, I agree. It's 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 on the line, but and and if we start talking about you know, like Judy said, individual employees because of certain circumstances, certainly we need to, but um, but yeah, I, I guess broad strokes, that would be my opinion is if you feel that you need to do this, um, you know, based on the advice that you've gotten from the associations and everything, I just, I would just make the employees whole with a new bucket of leave. I can craft up, just so you know, Judy, our vacation, they, they we don't require them to take it, actually it's a, something we're going to talk about here in a minute but our vacation time if you have to use a minimum of 50 percent of your vacation in the year that it's granted so you can only carry 50 percent in and then at the end of that second year you have to use that 50 percent so it ours can't our vacation can't stack forever that's, uh, that's i think that's fair yeah i agree so, in terms of this third bucket, then this 24 hours, do you want it to kind of follow a similar pattern as vacation or do we want to make this, this is 24, but you have to use it within the year it's granted to you? Three days. In ours, in ours we have to use it. Um, yeah. Or, I mean, like I said, it rolls into sick. Now, if you want that to roll into instead, you'd have to modify because you wouldn't want that accumulating forever either, I, I suppose. Um, but I mean, three days isn't a ton. So, I mean, they could burn three days pretty easily just in the holidays, so. Yeah, okay. So then um, my thought would be then is I'll, I'll go back through here. I'll create a third bucket we'll call personal leave time. The 24 hours that had been previously sick, I'll kind of lump into that. They'll need to use that within the year that it's given. So that will keep the employees, whoops. Let's get the employees at a, at a, a level on that level. And that, present this full policy to the board <clears throat> next week, I guess. Not me. I, not wanting to muddy the water, but could could we just create uh, three floating holidays that have to be used and won't be carried over? Yeah, yeah. I could actually floating do that. holidays. Yeah, yeah. I like. I think that's uh. I think that's brilliant. Use yeah. it. Use it or lose it. Yeah. yeah. 
because we already have floating holidays in our, and I didn't copy that piece for this conversation, but we already have that structure in place. So that would actually be very, very clean. Okay. Uh, I mean, very, very clean. Good idea, Ernie. That sounds good to me. Okay. So I'll just um, move this 24 to floating. Okay. And, and not to muddy the waters again, but um, the four hour increase, I, I mean, oh. you know, Ernie, what are you seeing out there with that? I mean, to me, I, I understand the reason why, but that's much more restrictive than at least we use. Um, you, do folks think that's a good idea, bad idea? Uh, I, I think what it what it does, Jack, is it covers somebody like one of one of the uh, items is you, uh, you need to go see see an attorney or, or for whatever or, or you're closing on a house or something and you don't need the whole day to do that at least the employer is getting four hours of productive work out of that eight hour day um okay yeah for for us we do um you know our increments oh right i see or, what you're saying right yeah. right or wrong so that that way, if I have to run down to urgent care, I don't have to use four hours. <clears throat> I think that the four hours is in the the law, though, isn't it, Dan? Isn't that um, the minimum set by the law? I don't think so. Uh, I don't have to double check on that. But I mean, but I guess barring barring the law changing it, I mean, we right now we do have one hour increments. I was just because of the the very, very broad, you can't even ask questions nature of this new kind of leave. Um, I was, I stretched it from one to four just as kind of a, maybe a way to kind of prevent abuse or people being tempted, uh, tempted to abuse this leave uh, inappropriately. But we can yeah, go to I, one hour and see what happens. I mean, I don't. Yeah, I, I, I get that and, and I understand, but you know, you got 40 hours a year most people are uh, you know will somewhat use that if not completely use it you know if it, it it just i i know other employers where you know like like the example you know i i have to go to urgent care i have to take my kid to urgent care but i gotta take a half a day where you know otherwise i was healthy enough or because it was a family member <coughs> you, you know i gotta i gotta burn half a day when i theoretically only needed to burn an hour and a half, two hours. Okay, well, what the law is saying here is the maximum increment for an employer, an employer may set for the use of sick leave under the law is four hours. An employee may use four hours of accrued sick leave as needed or less if the employer allows smaller increments of sick leave usage, such as one or two hours. So it's allowable. Okay. Yeah. So do you want me to bump that down to one then? I, what's what's the thoughts of the group? I mean, that's just my opinion. Or that seems to work real well. I would do one. I would do one hour. Yeah. Okay. And do you want to tickle with this last paragraph, or do you just want me to get rid of it? Um, See, wait for the wait for the, the inevitable lawsuits and see what the the, the courts uh, decide, and then kind of add stuff back in. Yeah, I think I think you're walking a fine line on on that uh, language in that. I don't know as if I don't know. You know I, the, I, I, yeah, I agree, Ernie. I just think that we need personally. I think we need some placeholder, and even if it's even if it's may require. Um, but that physician documentation might and it might be covered in other areas of comp law or some other thing. But I, I think we need to at least maintain a right to potentially request some form of medical documentation in the cases that we you know need it. it for for the vast majority of things, you wouldn't. But someone like like Dan said that has actual work restrictions, you know we. I, I think we need to be able to see documentation of that. So just replace the must produce with maybe asked to produce or something along that line instead of, you know, take the must out and 
yeah. put an A in. You know, leave it up to the the director to determine whether or not it's uh, something that he's. Yeah. Yeah. Is that OK with everyone? I, I, I just I just think we need to maintain that ability. Yeah, I agree. I think there's going to be lawsuits. I think the courts are going to get involved in this piece of legislation in the coming <coughs> months and years, and I think we'll get some clarification from that because uh, this is a very it's a protected class and once it's protected, it's going to be very hard. There's going to be a lot of lines that need to be drawn in the sand around it, so uh, okay. we can always adjust as the as the legal world changes. But, all right. okay. That was a long conversation. I apologize for the length of that, but um, it's a big one and we got to kind of get it done. So I will have the, the changes to the relevant policies put together and presented at the board meeting um, next week. Do you need a motion with the changes as discussed? Um, you could say that's the recommendations, a motion to recommend or motion to just actually no, I don't think you do because we'll actually okay. just approve it next week. OK. OK, and that covers vac vacation time extension or no? Uh, yep. Well, no, the vacation time extension is different. So I just want to remind everybody on the vacation time extension that um, back in May, we um, we made an extension right here. So in the midst of the downturn, um, and it goes back to some of the conversation I had as far as you, you know, using half of it in the first year, your vacation, you have to use it or lose it as far as 50% year one, 100% year two. We did kind of release that pressure because there was no place to take vacations <laughs> um, for those staff. And we extended it through the end of this calendar year. Um, I don't know where you stand in the world around us. If you would, if you would entertain the idea of maybe going through June to buy us another six months to kind of see if, Otherwise, we're going to be forcing employees because they've stockpiled for an additional seven months now. Um, we're going to be asking them to take vacation in the January, February, March, April, May, June, and there's not a lot of places in the U.S. that you can have meaningful vacations. Um, so I don't know what your thoughts are extending. I mean, we, I think staff will be flexible either way, and we'll we'll make it happen. Um, but I think there's there's going to be a small percentage of our staff that would. Um, you know, value kind of putting it off until they can actually go on a cruise or go visit family in the Carolinas or wherever. Um, so I don't I I hate to I hate to throw my own too much of my own recommendation in there. Um, other than to tell you that this extension is is ending here at the end of this month. Um, and I think there's a not a, not a. There is a there's a significant number of our staff that um, wouldn't mind having a little extra time to see this, see this out. Well, my opinion is since since you have the protections to Judy's point earlier that you know you're not accumulating forever and it's not really creating a significant long term liability for us. I mean, I'd be flexible at least on my in my view. And what is that in practice? Does that mean you know? Six more yeah, months. Let, let this let this waiver expire and have staff start using it, or give them a little extra time before that we have to take away the fifty percent, you know, that they need to use. What is your recommendation? Because <laughs> I, I I would be as flexible as you want. I, I but I but I think giving them extra time to be able to use instead of forcing them to burn it, because you're gonna you know once things really start cranking back to normal, you know you don't want all your staff you know, just burning time because they have to. Yeah. Well, that's no matter what happens, we're going to we're in a situation where they are going to have to burn some time, whether we force them to burn it in January, February, March, April, May, or if we kind of deal with it over the course of the next you know, year after that, and we kind of bring everything into equilibrium a year and a half from now. Um, my suggestion would be to extend to June 30th, truthfully, um, to give staff that ability to kind of to stretch it out staff some staff are taking vacations i don't want the, anyone to think that they're just you know stockpiling stockpiling or whatever 
Um, Kelly Christopher's off this week. Rayan was off. You know, Kelly McGowan's going to be off. So staff are using some time. Um, and I hate to throw names out there. I, it was just my mental thing. I apologize. Um, but I think there's a, a bunch of staff that uh, are still kind of like, where am I going to go on vacation, Dan? I, I, you know, literally can't go anywhere. So I'm going to go sit in my kitchen or. Um, I think any flexibility we could give them in terms of stretching it out and hopefully letting them take a meaningful vacation in the summertime when hopefully we've got enough vaccines out there and people go on wine tours again. People already are, but that's a separate. <clears throat> um, so, uh, yeah, I'm I'm fine personally with six months if the rest of the folks are. Yeah, I'm good with it. And, and a question, um, can uh, the employees uh, use their, vac do they have to take a, a, a 40 hour chunk or can they do a day at a time? Say, hey, listen, I'm going to take a, a yep. next couple of Fridays off or something like that. Uh, we're one hour increments, one hour increments on vacation, one hour increments on um, sick time. We always oh. have. Been. OK. And we do that. Some people will take, you know, two hours off on a, you know, every Thursday or something of vacation time to go do whatever they want to do. But yeah, it's hours. It's hour increments minimum. So if there's, is there? So did I hear a motion to extend this, um, uh, this waiver um, through 6:30, 2021? I'll move it. Second. Okay. Motion second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. So real quick, just a couple of report outs. Um, this is our business services report. You've seen this before. Um, this, excuse me, this is, uh, this is really, this is right before uh, Kelly went on vacation. So you can see all the different OJTs we've written at this point, 58,000 at 2000. So that's what, uh, I don't know, I'm math, 25, 6, 26, 27, 28, whatever the math is on that anyway. So there's this many. You can see here the red ones are ones where it didn't take. Remember I was telling you before, like you have people that don't finish their OJTs. So we initiated a number and we've lost a few um, along the way this year. Um, but we are still, we are still, uh, still plugging along. What is heartening is to see more of these, the DW mo in this column over here, we're actually starting to get down to, uh, that sounds so horrible when I say that. I like to spend dislocated worker funds. As a general rule, they're hard to, they've are hard they been hard to spend for a while, so I like the idea that we're spending them. I don't like the fact that it took a pandemic and a downturn to get us there, but anyways. So that's that. Um, on the customized trainings, you can see how we're doing so far this year. Um, we've had a couple that didn't finish through. So you see the Corning IDM plant actually ended all they did is they had to shut it down and restart because of COVID and production realities on the floor. So we just basically had to do a second contract out there um, with them. But we've got SolidWorks, business development. We've got a couple of these little diversity trainings and 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 uh, some of the, uh, where's the other one? We had another, another fairly soft skill one around there somewhere. But, um, we're seeing a lot of the trend within this customized training is we're seeing a lot of businesses train cross train employees. So instead of having a specialist welder and a specialist, I don't know, grinder, they're cross training their people so that when we've got welding work, you can both weld. And if we have to grind, then you can both grind or, but, the, but this will share this. The reality I think is that it's creating a scenario where it will make it businesses will be a little less. Uh, they'll be better prepared not to bring people back. Does that make sense? So right, if I had right. three before, two specialized in this and one specialized in that, I will now have two cross-trained employees and I won't bring that third one back, at least for a while till business warrants it again. So that's kind of in a nutshell what I'm seeing in the business world um, as far as the transition. All right. That's the business services. We can report it. Uh, I'll share it at the full board meeting. Um, and normally we do a quick motion to accept so we can present it to the board. I can move it. Second. Okay, good. good. <laughs> motion second. All in favor? 
Opposed? <clears throat> Carried? So we had one last minute thing I want to add in. So temporary check policy. Um, if you remember, we did a Department of Labor actually in the on, in the March time frame. Oops, in the March time frame, they actually allowed us to do an unheard of email um, vote on it. The executive committee voted. This was the actual check policy effective March 16th, and basically running until the end of the of the executive order um, around executive order about the the yeah disaster. Um, it's one signature. If we can get somebody to sign a second check, we do, but we've largely been, you know, trying to get the second signature from a Jack or a Jim or a, a Nancy or whomever. Um, we've kind of relieved that burden off of folks so we don't have that face to face uh, exposure. Um, but I made a mistake when I did the dates. So I'm mea culpa here. Um, so I did it effective March 16th, which was a Monday. The reality was is the checks that I was talking about or really most nervous about. Patty had actually put a check date of March 13th on them. So while they were unsigned on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, when I was really like, holy crap, I'm going to get these signed. The reality was is the check date was March 13th. So what I'm asking for is um, specific. Uh, and you can see the list of the exceptions here is there's no money to any staff. It's it's rent, it's contracts, it's training on things. Um, what I'm asking for is specific permission by the executive committee to include this very limited number of checks as outlined in this list under that um, temporary um, exception just to provide us the cover. And, and I, again, it's my fault completely on it. I dated it to Monday without realizing that the actual checks were, we ran them on Friday. Oh, so you're just looking for a you're looking for a motion to um, uh, to allow us to include these. What is it? Uh, three, six. I think it's around twelve checks. So this to include these checks under that waiver because we okay. only had the single. So single moved. Checks. So moved. Um, make a move that we allow these checks that you've identified under the waiver that was previously Second. approved. Yep. This waiver here. And I'm sorry to cause that that craziness, but that's I screwed up in the heat of the moment. I forgot or I didn't check it. So thank you. So I, that's the motion. OK, did I hear a second or no? Second group. OK, motion and second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried? I think All right. I got to abstain. Oh yeah, one of those is for for Tim. Thank you for abstaining. Yep. Oh, yeah. You want to get paid, huh? I get it. <laughs> <laughs> so a couple of things out there, real quick. Um, so Inspire grants were submitted. Um, we are actually supporting or listed as uh, part of the teams on two Inspire grants. These are grants around um, opioids and um, uh, and creating community structures to to train and support folks and and get them reattached to the workforce. Um, with both Corning Community College and Alfred State College. That's just an FYI. Neither of them are going to give us any money, um, but we are happy to participate in, in plan with those two entities. Um, the PTE grant. So the PTE, our uh, pathways program in Shimon County, um, we will be submitting next week um, for the RFP to give us up to five more years of service on pathways. Uh, unless for some reason the board does not want me to continue that that grant or not submit that grant effort. Um, but I would ask for permission to submit. The max will be $350,000 a year for five years, doing basically what we do now with the major exception here is that we'd be picking up some ABOD response, some, some responsibilities with the ABOD population. So able-bodied, what's ABOD? Phyllis, I'm gonna ask, what does ABOD mean? Um, able body work. It's I don't know exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's it's they're able to work. Yeah, they're able right? to work, but they're collecting. Um, I think yeah. like SNAP benefits and stuff like that. So yeah, in Shimon County, we've never done any work with that population before. Um, but in this RFP, they've they've included some activities under that. So that's really the material change. Um, you know, but could I please have permission to apply? Um to submit the application um, December 11th. So moved. Motion second. 
Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. And the lastly is really an open topic conversation. So as you all know, um, we have we very slowly and diligently kind of reopened our centers. Um, first of it was staff only, then it was appointments, and then it was um, some level of a little bit of walk in. Um, that's where we're at now is we have staff are in the centers. They set up appointments. If there is additional capacity over and above those appointments based on square footage and all the calculations, we do allow us a, a limited number of walk ins. Really, I just want to take the temperature of the group here. Are you OK with us continuing this or would you like to see us back back off a little bit? Um, I'm pretty comfortable. We've got a really good cleaning regimen. We're getting really good um, you know, compliance on the part of the staff and the customers and, and allowing for us to clean and, and, and do those things. We've not had any issues, but I know that with the oranges and the yellows and potentially even some reds floating around the state and, and whatnot, is it OK that we continue this or would you as a board like me to kind of maybe back off and, and shut down the walk ins or appointments or both? What are your thoughts? How many do you have? It's small numbers. I, I, it's it, the small numbers, but it's growing. So, if, for instance, in Elmira, we might see including walk-ins and appointments, PTE, as well as the career center. You might see upwards of ten people on a day. Um, bath, you might see four or five. Montour, four or five. So it's not a huge volume, but it's growing. So up two months ago, it was one or two. Um, now we're up, we're kind of slowly inching up against those capacities. And, and there is that breaker of there's only so many people allowed in the center at a time. So it's not like we're going to get a flood of people walking in the door. But having that ability to walk in is a little in, in, in appointments. We are introducing that risk into the centers. Uh, how's I want to just jump out to you all. How's your uh, mass compliance and all those other things? We've not had any issues reported to me anyways. Phyllis, have you heard any issues? You're muted. No, I haven't. No, there it's it's going fairly smooth now. Yes. Okay. Um, I mean, frankly, the numbers we're seeing, um, especially in Shemong, but even here are shocking. Um, we're seeing a real high level of positivity rate. Um for whatever it's worth. I mean, we're still doing all of our client services, we're still doing them by uh, appointment only. Um, but if someone has a walk up uh, at the county, we do accommodate them. We just send a caseworker or whomever outside or in the foyer to talk to them and figure out what they need and how we can do it. Um, we're, and I don't changing that. We are reducing our on site presence and doing teleworking uh, about 50 percent teleworking again as of this week. Uh, you know, in our experience, um, there's the risk is growing. Um, I wouldn't say at least personally, I would say it's if my thought is if you think that you have the appropriate safeguards in place for both staff and clients, um, I'd probably roll with it. But the first hint of any, you know, any issues to roll it back. Tim, I know you have you got a lot of walk in students. How are you guys doing? Are you adjusting anything? in your realm we don't have too many walk-ins we meet them at the our doors are locked we have them kind of make appointments for them to come and meet with us and we just had like uh 23 or four uh aesthetic students show up over the last two days we we make them uh come in one at a time to do that part of it um we actually moved a uh, welding class to cooper's campus in Stuben county to uh continue that uh Hands on in person until we can get it back to Bush Campus in Elmira. Dan, what are you doing in Hornell? So in Hornell, we're still down at the library. Um, although the business and whatnot, we we've backed down to three days a week um, as far as customers available. Now I see the library is actually going to be opening, so I'm going to go have a conversation with their board about what they do. The Career Center in Hornell, there are staff there, so um, some limited staff that are using that. So that is a no customers in the career center, but there are some limited staff usage of that space and three days a week at the library. That's current. I, if I could get 
the Department of Labor to allow me to do appointments and stuff in the in the career center over there on Broadway. I I, I would, but the Department of Labor is they're not willing to to go there yet. And because they're the primary leaseholder and I'm just a subleasee, um, I, I can't do anything. Right. So stay where we're at now and 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 or or try and maybe back off the walk-ins or and or appointments. I, I just does anyone have a very, very strong opinion or just keep doing what you're doing? Okay. Just keep monitoring, you know. If it looks like it's starting to get out of hand, then put the hammer down. All right, so we have we have limited. I mean, realistically, I mean, at any given time in our Elmira Center, we I think the max capacity for the entire floor of the Academic Workforce Center is was it four, Phyllis? Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's in terms of volume of people, there are there are caps there. Montour is two, Bath is two, or oh, Bath is three now. Sorry. Um, mm -hmm. So there, we're not going to have groups of people. We're not in group activities. This will be one on one appointments or or meetings with people. So. Yeah, right, I will. I will stick with it then. Um, and just, I just wanted to take a temperature of everybody before I, before we got too far. All right, that's it. That's just an FYI, unless you want to make a motion on something. But otherwise, probably the next motion would be to uh, adjourn ten minutes later than at nine ten instead of nine o'clock. So move. Second. <laughs> motion second. Any questions? <gasps> Favor. Aye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, right, thanks. I appreciate it.